have a question for you guys. Which studio monitors are you using right now, and what is your opinion on them? Let me know in the comments. Number 5. JBL-1 Series 104 – Best Entry Level Designed with home recording, podcasting, and portability in mind, the JBL-1 Series 104 studio speakers deliver a lot of performance for not a lot of cash. As you'd expect from JBL, we were seriously impressed with the sound reproduction, which was both balanced and accurate across a wide frequency range. It's been a while since we were able to recommend a pair of desktop speakers, so we're happy we can do it with the JBL-1 Series 104 BT. Bluetooth 5 connectivity makes them versatile too. One minute they're at the heart of your studio, and the next they can be in the kitchen, streaming from your phone. A great choice for lots of situations. You can tell the 104 BTs aren't going to be entirely bookish by their distinctive ovoid design. Available in a black or white finish, these stout and solidly built units each house a 12cm low-frequency driver and 20mm soft dome tweeter, fired up by up to 60 watts of combined amplification and tuned by a rear-firing reflex port on each speaker. Overall, then, the JBL 1 Series 104s stand up incredibly well given price and size. I almost feel bad to criticize them as they most definitely fulfill that brief of delivering a best-in-class performance. Certainly, you won't find anything at this price point that gets close. Number 4. Presonus Eras E3.5 – Best for the Money The company has managed to produce one of the best studio monitors out there, used in studios all around the world for their excellent clarity and flat response to make them excellent options. And this set here is actually all under $200 so you can get great performance without spending a small fortune. I also like that there's no excessive branding on the body of these. They're matte black with a vinyl finish, just simple and beautiful. On the front side of the main speaker, you have volume and power controls along with a 3.5mm aux input. On the back, you'll spot the frequency controls and the balanced quarter-inch TRS and unbalanced RCA inputs. No complaints so far. Both of these speakers are equipped with 3.5-inch custom-woven Kevlar woofers and 1-inch ultra-low mass silk dome tweeters, which should provide a great performance overall. I should state that each speaker provides about 50 watts of performance, which should be pleasing for most of us. The frequency response range spans from 80 to 20,000 Hz, and one of my favorite things about these is the soft start feature that eliminates that annoying pop sound when powering up. In terms of performance, the Presonus Eris E3.5s eliminate the distortion in the entirety of the frequency range and deliver great monitoring experiences. If you raise the volumes, you'll notice some rattling, but for the price, these are great. Number 3. Edifier R1280T – Best Mid-Range Option The Edifier R1280T is another amazing speaker system. These speakers deliver rich, balanced audio and they come with an adjustable EQ for a pretty affordable price. These speakers are some of the best because even though they're not as pricey as other high-end speakers, they still deliver amazing sound quality and they can get pretty loud too. I should mention that each speaker packs a 13mm silk dome tweeter, a port to allow the drivers to perform more efficiently and to move air, and a 4-inch woofer. The first thing I noticed on the right speaker was that there's also a recessed area housing three knobs. At the top it has one for treble, on the middle for bass, and on the lowest one for volume. I also recommend this product to anyone who wants to buy a good speaker system that provides high-quality sound and has great features. The build quality is top-notch, and the design of these speakers is very stylish. If you want to enjoy better music and better sound quality, make sure to check out the Edifier R1280T because they won't let you down. Definitely one of the best studio monitors in the market. Number 2. Mackie CRX – Best Runner-Up here comes one of the most popular speaker pairs from Mackie. The CRX series has more than five speakers with and without Bluetooth connectivity. The pair we're reviewing here has almost the same specifications, quality, and performance as its other siblings. When looking at it from the front, you'll see a bright outline in green color all over its surrounding, which seems like it's reflecting, but actually they're not. It glows a little, but they don't reflect. You'll get different outlines on different subwoofers. It produces a nice quality of bass with its mid-range driver, which creates an amazing audio stereo imaging in your mind. This is some sort of natural sound, which means that if your record has something bad with it, you're going to feel this as well. So it's better to have a record with a clear sound. Recordings with serious low-end content will make the monitors distort if pushed beyond moderate listening levels. Although the CRX monitoring system isn't feature-packed with EQ controls and room placement filters like many modern monitors, 
The inclusion of Pro Tools Fur software more than compensates, making them an extremely attractive proposition for budding bedroom producers starting from scratch. Number 1. JBL 305P Mark II – Best Overall JBL has been a pioneer in sound engineering. Founded in 1946, it's been one of the companies that raised the standards when it came to acoustics. The company is well known for its speakers, headphones, headsets, and related accessories. As JBL yearly innovates to provide better options for recorders, musicians, sound engineers, producers, and the audiophile, it's introduced the JBL 305P Mark II. Its predecessors provided a good competitor for the studio monitor line. Now, the 305P Mark II has its time to shine. In producing a sound, it requires a frequency. The average threshold for human hearing is between 15 and 18,000 Hz. A low rumble can be heard in 50 Hz, while a hiss can be recognized at 12,000 Hz. A low frequency driver for the transducer size is 203 mm or 5 inches, while the high frequency driver a tweeter is 25 mm or 1 inch, made in the soft dome. As to power, it has 41 watts per driver. Volume levels demand an average of 20 watts. 305P Mark II still provides an excess, thus can play higher volume levels. Overall, our team liked the JBL 305P Mark II sound monitors in every way possible. The accessible price makes them affordable to those getting serious with their audio, while the advanced engineering means they won't feel or sound dated over the years. Buying Guide Power When people talk about the power of speakers, most people think the higher the wattage, the higher the maximum volume output to the speakers. While that is also the case, the more power the speaker has, the more detailed the sound is across a wider dynamic range, so you can control and check the sound without any distortion. This is one of the weakest areas of budget monitors, since they generally have lower power and distort both in the low and high-end frequency range of your track. I generally don't recommend going below 50 watts, but it also depends on the choice. Total Harmonic Distortion or THD The spec for THD is also an indicator of general accuracy, but in a different way than frequency response. Total harmonic distortion lets you know how cleanly a monitor can reproduce whatever audio you feed it. Most of the time, the term THD really refers to THD plus N, total harmonic distortion plus noise, so when you see THD, you can usually include noise in the equation. Every audio circuit adds some noise and distortion. The question is, how much? A clean audio circuit should be very close to zero in the amount of distortion and noise it adds that is, about 0.001%. A poorly designed audio circuit will add quite a bit of distortion in the range of anywhere from 0.3 to 1%. Controls Some like it simple. They want an on-off button and a volume knob. Some want a bit more control with individual dials for low, mid, and high end. Some want a physical controller. Some want an app. Some just want their phone's volume buttons to control their speaker's volume. There's no right answer on what the best option is. If you don't know what you're supposed to do with it and don't care to learn, an extra dial isn't much of an advantage. If you're just going to let it run out of batteries or lose it in the couch, the controller isn't much help either. Our best advice is to be honest with yourself and figure out exactly what features 